What is going on, everybody? How you doing? Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate each and every one of you. I got a couple announcements to make, but first we're going to uh, shout everybody out. I want to say hello to Annette's Catfishing, channel supporter, Avid Fisherman. What's going on, Avid? Big Wrench Catfishing. Brian Shepard's in the house. Crappie Day Fish On. He's also a crew member. Thank you for your support. Fishing with Squirrel. What's up, Dawson? There's Freddie, channel supporter from Freddie's Outdoor Adventures. Make sure you check out his FOA rods. Uh, there's Michelle from It's Online. Down Boys Catfishing's in the house. Lance McCougai. How you doing, Lance? P&B Catfishing, a.k.a. Paul Boyd. Steve Ransom. What's going on, Steve? Team Snagging Whiskers. How you doing, Dustin? Uh, Tim Molina, crew member. What's going on, Tim? How you doing? If I missed anybody in chat, you need to speak up so I can see you. We got more people than that watching, but I think they're just watching in the background. There's Big Wrench. What's going on, Big Wrench? How you doing? Um, let me see what else we got going on here in chat. I'm going to scroll through here real quick before we get the show started. Um, uh, first announcement I am going to make, people, is I am not doing March Madness 1v1 this year. Uh, I got a bunch of stuff going on. I got some other personal reasons. Uh, we may do a, a one in the fall. Hey, what's going on, Brian B? How you doing? Uh, but we are not doing one this uh, March. Um, we're going to wait probably till fall if we do it at all. I appreciate everybody asking and inquiring about it, but I kind of been putting it off for other reasons. And uh, the next one is pretty much kind of it. My father went into the hospital today. So if you guys have any uh, thoughts and prayers to send his way, I would appreciate it very much. So there's a lot of people out there that are in that same boat here. Um, we're, we're getting to that age, at least the people in, in, in my circles are. So uh, keep everybody in your thoughts and prayers. And I appreciate each and every one of you for being here week after week. I see Dan Thompson in the house, too. Uh, he caught, I caught him by the corner of the eye. I got to make sure I got to shout out my supporters. So, uh, so that's kind of what's going on. Um, I know people are saying it's a long ways off, but he's been having some repetitive health issues. So um, we're not going to count those. Uh, we're, we're, we're not going to. We're going to we're going to play with this card. So. There's real gals fish. What's going on, Steffi? How you doing? K-Way Redneck Outdoors. What's up, my friend? How are you doing? Try to get your, uh, get everybody big wrench. If I called you out a second time, uh, I apologize, but you're worth, every one of you guys is worth being called out twice. There's uh, Chris over at Hooks and Hammocks. How you doing? Uh, he's saying hello to everybody up here on screen. Uh, I think I got everybody. Oh, there's Hogleg. What's up, Hogleg? I saw listeners in there earlier. I also see LG Bass coming in. I'm getting feedback from somebody. Who's that? That's Poppin' Parker. Is that Jerry Parker? Yeah. That's your feedback? It's always oh, Poppin' dear. Parker. <laughs> well, we'll make do the best we can. LG, what's going on? Uh, Goober Time TV, hey, what's going on? Uh, thank you, Fisher for Faith. I appreciate you. How are you doing, sir? David, <clears throat> David Smith in the house. What's going on, David? How are you? Uh, let's see what else we got here. I think I and Damn River Boys, what's going on? Hey, they're, they're piling in now. Welcome to the Captain <laughs> Chappy Podcast. How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome to the show. Tonight, I got the River Rats on tonight. Oh, my goodness. I feel so honored and privileged and a little scared <laughs> at the same time. You should be. We got a ten dollars show from Steffi over at Real Real Gals Fish. What's going on, Steffi? Thank you very much, dear. I appreciate you. So, fellas, I hear you had a pretty good weekend this weekend. Actually, pretty good. Is a we, we all know each other here, so I always have to remind myself that I need to talk to you like I don't know you. So, tell me a little bit about the river bats. River River bats. Does anybody ever call you the river bats? That's my first question. That's the first. That's <laughs> that's first. Now they will. Thanks, Mark. I well, they mind. added a few other. They they added a few other letters to that, and you could come up with something. There you yeah. go. You know that, that's my biggest <laughs> problem. My, my my mouth is in in fifth gear, and my brain is in first. <laughs> Here's how the show goes. So, how'd you guys get together? The river rats. Tell us about the river rats. You guys fished the Mississippi River, correct? Yes, that's the, yep, correct. That's the connection right there. All right, and how did you guys get together? Well, uh, oh, actually, man. Uh, I, yeah, I started out, I contacted Richard 
And me and him had a discussion about maybe uh, putting a team together. And he suggested Jerry Parker to me. And uh, we he contacted Jerry. And Jerry was on board, no questions asked, man. I mean, he was fired up and said, yeah, I'll heck yeah, let's do this. And we started out just the three of us. And uh, we called uh, – uh, the guy called our eye that was uh, a little Creole catfishing dude that fished the Mississippi River. And I said, man, we got to get this. And they go, man, there's no way we can get Creole. No way we can get Creole. <laughs> and we contacted him. And I mean, doggone if he it wasn't Mississippi proud and said, let's do it, boys. You That's pretty much the nutshell right there. I was told <laughs> you heard it. I was picked last. <laughs> I know how you feel, Jeremy. I've known Jeremy for a while, and I've never known him to, to to step down from a challenge, and that definitely was probably something that's right up his alley. Plus, oh, yeah. it's a lot easier when you got a bunch of people out fishing live together. You get to bounce stuff off of each other and, and hang out together. I mean, except for that, we won't get into that. Poor me and Christina. We had a long day that day. Oh. Yeah, we wasn't much help y'all up here that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, whose channel was that on again? I forgot. That was on Josh's channel, right? That was on that Jerry's. Was that was on Jerry's channel? That's right. Yeah, you got to take me off as the administrator around there, too. Just trying to talk to everybody. So first time I met a few of them guys, you know, so. But hadn't seen, like, D and Chad in a while, you know. Hadn't seen him, uh, Telly and Chris. Hadn't seen him in a while. And we had G17 Rebel Outdoors. We had Jello come up. I mean, we we had a bunch of folks. You know, it was a good time just hanging out and talking to everybody. Fishing wasn't so good, but the company was great. So that makes for a good day either way. Absolutely. So who who else was up to Chad and D were up there? You said two one seven. Who else? Uh, Chris and Telly. Uh, we had Jello Chris up there. And yeah, and Jello, Richard, uh, Josh. Uh, my nephew is up. Am I forgetting anybody, guys? Caitlin was the, Caitlin? the most important one there. Oh, I mean, yeah, that was, yep. He's trying to forget Caitlin because they were supposed to have a competition, and I think that Parker was do trying to dodge that whole thing and kind of like <laughs> he was trying to like sweep it under the rug so that it yep. kind of didn't. Happen. Hey, I was teaching Caitlin how to roll down hills and stuff, you know. Uh, yeah, that's he, true. Totally distracting her. Totally distracting her to forget about the competition. Well, you guys did turn it into a, a, a men versus ladies there towards the end of the of the day, and I think the ladies did whoop you guys. So. Yes, they did. They did. <laughs> so, how far do y'all live from one another? Well, me and Danny live in the same town. Uh, Jerry's about two hours. Probably two hours north of us. Yep. And Jeremy, you're what? Twelve I'm hours about, south of us. About ten hours south. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I'm 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 the outlier. So you guys got a good part of that river pretty much covered. If I lived closer, I could cover the north for you, but unfortunately I don't. Mm -hmm. Um, but it is on my two two fish destinations for this summer, so we'll we'll see. Maybe I can do a, a, a guest appearance on one of your live streams. Oh, no doubt, no me. doubt, absolutely, that'd be awesome. Well, I know that's yeah, we got pretty much covered from being that far apart. Our section of rivers are night and day, are yep. night oh, and day yeah. from each other. Yeah. You know, yeah. And, you know, sometimes that works to our advantage. It's like uh, Parker right now, he's still dealing with low water because he's above the Ohio confluent, okay? Mm -hmm. now, uh, now, Creole's got water now, but all the trash that floated past me and Richard uh, a week and a half, two weeks ago, it's in it's in Creole's yep. front yard right now. But our water yep. is perfectly clear. It's, it's beautiful right now. I've never I've seen that river look that good in a while. But there's always at least one of us that's got the perfect scenario yeah. on that river. Yeah. Majority top. We we caught a rough streak this past year, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Take it easy. We got to keep them on on edge here. <laughs> Definitely do. Uh, yeah. Big Rich Catfishing says he's got Baton Rouge area covered. If you yep. guys want to holler out to him for a guest yep, appearance, Brian is just yeah. out. Yeah. Yep. Yep. yeah, it's it's pretty drastic the differences in our sections of the river, but there's also a lot of similarities because it is. 
the free flowing section of the Mississippi. You know, none of us are above the dams or anything. So, but right. it's just really neat. Like Jerry, up where he's at, he's got, you know, there's some twists and turns, but he's got a lot more straight river, and he's got a lot of wing dikes and stuff that he fishes. So me and da- me and Danny have a few small wing dikes. Yeah. Do I, Jerry? I'm a seem like the area I'm in is a lot swifter current. Too. Yeah, that's what I said. You got a lot more straightaways there. So, and then of course me and Danny, like we've got. I'm sorry, Jerry. We got I'm some big horseshoes and stuff. So there's no there's no dams uh, uh, south of where you guys fish. No, uh, not to my knowledge. No, the uh, hmm. it would be about four and a half hours for me. It'd be in Keokuk, Iowa. Keokuk. Last. Yeah. No, I'm sorry, Alton Dam. Alton mm-hmm. Dam, which would be about yep. two hours from me, is the last dam on the river. And I, as far as the, start going north, and you hit the Keokuk, then you have a series of dams up up river. But once you get below Alton, it's free flowing all the way to, to the coast, all the way to Creole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all the way down. Yeah, I know that all. I know that yeah, there's time. a in Alton, and I didn't realize that was the last one on the way down. But that tells you what I know about that river. So, I'd like to learn more, which is one of the reasons I like hanging out with you guys and talking to you guys. <clears throat> that and Lyle Stokes and, and and a bunch of other people. It's always good to learn about that. Every time I drive over that river, all I can think about is I, I need to fish that. Need to fish it. Need to fish it. And, and I did get a chance to go down there and, and fish down by where uh, uh, in Avid's neck of the woods. I uh, didn't do very well, but I definitely I've said it time and time again. Ne- learned a new respect for that river. So, yep. and that's kind of in the neck of the woods where you fish, isn't it, Jerry? Yes, uh, over there, uh, Cash Cash Locking Dam. That's right where the confluence in the Mississippi. I can be over there in about forty minutes. Yeah, and it's I know. Good, I know. Fish, I've caught some nice fish right there. You ever fish that hole right off the path over there? Yep. Okay. Good. Now, how have you done over there? Is that where you get your monsters from? Actually, I do better uh, either right where it dumps into the river or like late at night. I go above the lock wall on the upside of the upstream of the lock, getting around after midnight. I mean, we've had some show where we ran real late, and I've been over there, and I've been able to pull some pretty pretty respectable fish out of there. So, oh, yeah. I, I know that's the exact spot you're talking about. When we were there, we fished that spot. It was like 100 freaking degrees that day. I remember that even more. So it was a hot, hot day. And then the next year when I went down there, it was ice cold. It was like 40s at night. It was pretty ridiculous. Same time of the year, too, if I'm not mistaken, though. I'd go back down there. I'd have to prepare a lot different, too, because I went down there way undergunned. I'm not going to let that happen again. I'm going to make some phone calls before I head out to that big river and, and see what I need to bring. So that's the thing. You get used to fishing your own scenario and stuff. I mean, you're not going to bring the Mississippi River stuff out to, to uh, um, uh, Baldwin, right? No. No. <laughs> right. right. The exact opposite. So. Yeah. Now, let's talk a little bit about <laughs> unless, unless you're Danny. <laughs> well, I know Danny, Danny, you're a bank fisherman, right? Absolutely. It, that's where my heart is at. And I just needed to bring this. Were, were you on the boat this weekend? Yes, I was. Oh, well, you know, the- here's the thing. We were scouting out because weekends. we're fishing the winter blues next Saturday. Mm-hmm. So we got we got to get our game plan together, and, I, and if nothing changes, there's going to be some people sweat. Well, you got to be careful. Bobcat got quite the bag to beat. Yeah, he did. Bobcat. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, we landed three, we, between the two of us. We landed what three hundred? Was it three hundred forty-five or three hundred sixty-five pounds of fish this Saturday in a little over three hours? And well, what did Bobcat get amongst himself, though? I think he's at 124, I think. Something like 120? Yeah, like Like 124 or something, I believe. Yeah. Danny's pulling his calculator out. I'm doing some math, baby. I'm going to pull up our biggest fish. From Saturday. Yeah, that 70 that Bob got was was awesome. That's going to make him hard to handle in that tournament. Yeah, you better believe it. Well, you guys didn't do too bad this week, but if you can do a repeat show of that, you're going to give them a run for the money. So, oh, yeah. 
Definitely. Yeah, but my point, my, my point was, yeah, no kidding. Minnow Dunkers in chat says, Mark, give us a little ice dance. I'm ready to walk on water again here. Yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't hold your breath. I was just watching Ryan Hall, y'all. Looks like we got a bunch of bad weather coming this way. And he doesn't know whether it's going to be cold or hot. So, oh, wow. Go figure. So, we'll wait and see. And D's answering the question with 124 pounds for the okay. yep. Thank you, D. I appreciate it. 24 pounds. The last couple of weekends, the river bite's been excellent. I mean, the last two weekends, I mean, the river bite has been really, really good. For hey, what Bobcat have? 124. <laughs> Our total three big fish was 136.78. I Is wish that- we'd have took it that day. Wait, 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 wait. We, we, we want to make sure that you're answering this question right. Is that your big three fish or Richard's big three but, fish? But if- we're on a team together, so when we do the, the, the top three fish from that boat, the top three fish from that boat last Saturday was 136.78 pounds. Well, there you go. You got, just got to do it a second time. Yeah. Oh, no, we're going for at least 150 on that. I want 350s on the boat. <laughs> well, if, right. if everything works out according to plan, we should have the, the right conditions. This week, we have a slow three-foot rise on the river. The weather's supposed to be nice, though. I mean, we've got a good chance to, to hit, him, hit him again. Yep. That's Brian the hope, B, anyway. Brian B. Catfishing has uh, been a member for 18 months. He, has, uh, he says, Austin awesome panel, guys, I wouldn't trade none of them for 8.19 pounds of fish. <laughs> hey, Brian B.'s name got brought up. The second we that we when we got in the first batch of fish, we weren't live, and we did video it. And Richard has that footage now. But uh, then we moved down to start the live because we didn't have signal where we were at where the, where the monsters were. We moved down to the second location and we went live. And right off the bat, tripled up, and we're going to talk about that because I'm almost counting it as a quadruple. And we landed those three fish, and the first thing out of Richard's mouth was. What Brian B. <laughs> you tell Danny's excited, folks? I didn't even ask him about it. I got I got something for Brian right there. Oh, hold on. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Jody's posted up for bad. She's been a member for four months. Thank you very much. I appreciate you, Jody. Also, fishing and stuff. What's going on, Keith? He says, the River Rat is a restaurant near where he's at. Must be a good one. <laughs> nice. Yep. Be good. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to go back to this weekend, Danny. How many pounds of fish you say? Hundred and thirty for for the total for uh for the three biggest ones. Am I me adding that up? Give me a Here's second. Give me a second. Sean. Says reel them in, fellas. Thank you for being a supporter and fishing with the Chad for twenty months. Brian B, I'll trade you him for. Uh, a bacon sandwich. <laughs> I think the total for the day, actually, that three and a half hours, it was it was close to three hundred fifty pounds. It was three hundred forty six point eight two total weight of all the fish we caught, not counting the sturgeon. Nice. Three hundred forty six point eight two in just under four hours, and the top three fish on our boat that weekend was one hundred thirty six point seven eight pounds. Ooh. Big. Bobcat by about 12 pounds. <laughs> you just got to do it on game day, Danny. Yeah. Jerry, Jerry's got that look like you're, you're jinxing us, Danny. You're jinxing yeah. us. Yeah. Man, I don't believe yeah. in that crap. I go in all that stuff, man, just believing the best and accepting the worst. That's how yeah. I live. I mean, I'm hoping for the best. What, what I'm, I- for it. I'm believing in it. If it don't happen, then that just wasn't meant to be. And I'm okay with that. But you what guys, I keep telling you all day, man, why didn't we fish winter blues today? <laughs> why couldn't we be doing it today? I know it because it would have been a done deal. <laughs> because the re- I didn't want to fish winter blues that day. I always like going second because here's the reason why. Because say you go th- the first day and you come out on top. You ain't sleeping for a week wondering if somebody's going to come up the next weekend and beat you. I want to be the guy that's sleeping. Yeah. While I, I want to let them sweat. Let them sweat. Yeah. I want to go second. <laughs> I just want to put fish in a boat on any day that I'd be fishing. Yeah, so that's exactly. the way I kind of would look at it. So, yep. If, I've had I, some I wanted, struggles. I want, to talk about the, I want to talk about the first triple up. I really do. Mm-hmm. Because uh, 
I had a rod go down. And Richard said, hey, man, you got to fish. Because I'm out burning my mouth and doing Danny Stone stuff. And I go over and set the hook. And I'm reeling it up, talking smack. And I look to my right, and another rod, one of my rods goes down. I just snatch it up, hand it across to Richard. He's reeling in fish on my rod. We're sitting there double pumping these fish together. He looks to his left, and one of his rods goes down. And so I grab my rod back from him, stick it in the holder, and I'm trying to wind it, and then the one I've got in my hand. And Richard's cranking down on it. Now, Richard, I'm going to tell you something. At one point, your other rod went down. It bent down real hard and then went really slack when you were reeling. And you said, I think I'm just hung up in it. But if you remember, that rod pulled yeah. and bounced. It bounced. Okay? And when you start reeling, the line dropped slack, so you assumed you were hung up in it. But if you go watch, we got that fish in, and it was not hung up in that other line. You know, the line was still slack. Right. Immediately after we released the free fish, that, rod, that line went out again, and that rod doubled over. Yep. We had four fish on at the same time. I'm telling you, go watch the video and yep. you listen to what I'm saying while the video's going. I said, there's a fish on that. And you said, no, it's dropping slack. I'm reeling in. But when we pull the fish in, you weren't tangled up in it. And you watched the line go out and you watched the rod go over. That fish was on there the whole time. We had a quadruple. I'm not counting it because we released the other three and then we about one in. Yeah. There you go. You can watch yeah, the video. Yeah, as soon as we put them three back. As soon as we dropped the, the last one in, I turned around and that other rod was doubled over, peel and drag. And I've watched that a hundred times because we had our back to it. And the whole time the rod was bent over and pulling drag and we were had our back to it talking about the free we just caught. And that was going on behind us the whole time. <laughs> How so oh, yeah, hey, Creo caught that back. much by himself when you all fished against the boar's nest. Uh, I figured somebody <laughs> was going to bring that up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's I true. Showed up, I just showed up, caught my fish, and left. I was like, it hey, goes uh, back dude, to what I did like, Jeremy did like the ultimate mic drop during that tournament, man. Yeah. He came in late, pounded the fish, like just no yeah, question, landslide, crazy. dropped his mic, and went home early. <laughs> that was. That was pretty awesome. And it, that, it goes back, that, that goes back either. to what I said earlier. That goes back to what I said earlier. When, when, when part of the team is weak, the other team is strong because yeah. we're in the different areas and we, we yeah. cover each other in that aspect. When yeah. one is weak, the other's there to pick up the slack. Yeah. Somebody, one of us, is always having a good day fishing. Yep. Yeah, well, one yeah. of us always is. Well, that being said, uh, where were you on, guys? Like episode 34, 35? That was 32 uh, Saturday. That was episode 32. And there has been a zero skunk. Never so skunk. Far on, on the show. That's true. <laughs> uh, we call fish on every show. Yep. And, and, and I, have, I have no uh, delusions that it never will happen. I'm sure it will eventually, but. Oh, yeah. I don't. Look for it anytime soon. <laughs> D says you need to stop turning your back on the rods. First, Betty fell in, then you miss another fish. <clears throat> hey, it happened several times. Good point there. The last fish on that live stream, me and Richard are telling everybody bye. And if you look over my left shoulder, there was a freaking rod. The tip was touching the water, and we were sitting there telling everybody bye. And we turned around one more time and go, hold up, wait a minute. We're not leaving yet. <laughs> yep. But yeah, I watched the video over and over with it. I'm looking behind me, and that rod is just peeling off the whole time, and we didn't even know it. I had a live stream like that where I was like thinking, oh, I'm going to get skunked again. If, if I wasn't so tired and I wasn't too lazy to pack up five minutes earlier, I wouldn't have put that last fish on. So I know exactly yeah. what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. LG Bass, thank you for being a crew member for 18 months. He's asking any good zombie carp recipes. I think he's talking to you, Danny. <laughs> yeah. what? Yes, what now? Any good uh, zombie carp recipes. Oh, you don't eat that crap. <laughs> 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 hey, for zombie carp, catch it. In the, it has to be, uh, uh, you know, in, in the lower 30s in so the temperature or whatever. It doesn't actually have to be freezing. Catch your carp, stash it under a stump under the bank. It's good for a month. <laughs> as long as the temperature never gets up too high. Oh, boy. And, That's and, my and, and they work. 
Minnow Dunkers and Chats letting us know that Cabela's King Cats will be at Sandusky Bay this year. Uh, we got to go up there. It says they've won uh, 6700 bucks in the last three years up there. Good job, bud. Heck yeah. Nice. Sandusky Bay is definitely another place that we got to all go up and fish. That would be a good time. For sure. I was listening to Lyle and, uh, and Terry and talk about it earlier. I definitely want to go up there and check that out. I've seen so many videos from that place. It's kind of hard not to head out that way. It's not all that far either. So be a good time. But I, from my understanding, I think there's certain times of the years that are definitely better than others, just like a lot of the places yeah. that we fish. So yeah. it's yeah. kind of hard to travel to a place he, when you're not sure what the person's going to be like. He had me at 30 pound channel cat. You say that, I'm there, man. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get one this year. I'm definitely going to get one this year. I don't care if it takes the whole month of May. <laughs> that's still just very hard for me to imagine. You know, a 30-pound channel cat. That's just, you know, because in, in my area, they get four pounds. <coughs> you know, that, that that's wild. Yeah. Cool. I guess there's a Sweet 16 Cat Tournament coming to Santee Cooper, and Doc Lang's supposed to finish it. There's a, another legend that in the cat fishing world. Oh, man, if Doc Lang's going, y'all just might as well stay home. <laughs> I just wish that wasn't so darn far. I wish you guys didn't live so far. You guys live too far. I think you guys are like eight or nine hours with for me with a layover or whatever, maybe eight hours closer to eight. Wow. Maybe. Well, that's not too yes. bad. I could usually do that, but how many times a year can you leave? Your dance card gets filled pretty quick, so. Yeah. So we'll see. I'm, I'd like to fish that Kia Cut area over here on the river. Give that a mm -hmm. shot, so we'll, we'll yep. see what happens. That's a little closer. That's a little more doable. Heck, yeah. Josh gives me a bunch of grief for not coming down and fish with him when I found out it was seven hours to go down there, so. Yeah. People telling us how far they are from fight film and stuff. What's going on, Nubbies? So, yeah, somebody I forgot to get me mentioned that, Danny, if you guys win this uh, Winter Blues, that there's going to be an asterisk next to your name that you won in a boat. <laughs> no, because that ain't got nothing to do with that. <laughs> the, I, the, the, all the way me and Richard were getting in it, because, you know, Chad had a pretty full uh, ticket on that. And, and me and Richard both wanted to fish it, and the, our best shot of getting in that was to team up on his boat. It helped Chad out because it, it gave him, you know, uh, more fishermen yeah. in, 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 the, in the tournament and bunched him up to where he could get another slot somewhere else. I think Chad would have just done just fine getting them spots filled up, Danny. Oh, no, that's the problem. They were full, and we had to open yeah. them. By us combining, it gave him an extra spot. Yeah. I'm just giving you the business, buddy. That's all. Yeah. you got to fill up them it's spots. Up, it's up to these two here, you know, to keep the streak alive. Because so far, winter blues, the river rats have it locked down. A river rat has won winter blues every year so far. See, now I didn't no have pressure. any pressure on my mind at all until you said that. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just no, you know, no pressure, but I'm just Thanks I'm pressure, it's, it's up to y'all. No pressure. We've got a game plan. Don't worry about it. We've got a game plan. Absolutely. It's Big not rest. just uh it's not like every other tournament hour fish where I just drove up down the river and looked at a spot and go, ah heck this'll do. Yeah. <laughs> We've rest. actually Can't done some you. research this time. Big wrench catfish in St. Creole, the Louisiana channel. State record is 55 pounds out of the Red River in 2008. That I think that was caught in yeah. North Louisiana towards Shreveport. I believe. That's, I believe so. That, that's, that's an unbelievable nature. channel, Cat. Freak of nature. <laughs> Freak of nature. I don't even know what the Illinois state record is. I'll have to take a look at that. Or, I know the Wisconsin's up. That guy's ball and lake, Mark. <laughs> but I am convinced. It's a, it was a misidentified blue cat. You think so? Yeah, That's what happens a lot of times. In yep. well, not I'm, a lot, but yeah, confident it, with a misidentified blue cat. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard rumors of that stuff happening quite a bit. We got people here on the river that call them Fox River Blue Channel cats. And they're, oh yeah, we they're not yeah. blue cats. <laughs> yeah, we, we hear that down here too. Yeah. If I had a dollar for every time somebody said, "Oh, uh, oh, that that's a that's a blue channel." No, it's not. 
What? <laughs> I usually just offer to take a picture for him and say, "Enjoy your catch." That's the way yeah, you got to be. Yeah, yeah, exactly. See, I don't, I don't even tell them, especially for a YouTuber. I was like, "Well, go on there and tell everybody about it." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, put your video up and tell them what it is, and I don't have to say anything. Jack tears them up. <laughs> It's like, it's like a guy at the boat ramp one time trying to tell me that you can't see a catfish on a sonar. I couldn't stop myself. I said, well, this is going to be your little secret, dude. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> yeah, there's so many absolutes out there that when somebody breaks those, oh, yeah. that it's always a big surprise. They get all oh, sorts yeah. of grief and stuff. So, mm -hmm. well, I was heading to the river the other day when it was colder and really cold. Well, it was not this past week and the weekend before, and they're like, well, What are you doing? What are you fishing for? I said, Well, I'm going to the river fish for catfish. Oh, you're an idiot. You can't catch catfish when it's cold. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I Yeah. <laughs> That's one of the problems around here because nobody fished for catfish in the winter around here. Then they see me and Richard Cluck start putting out videos all winter long catching fish, and now. Man, we got some competition. They're just piling in them spots where yeah. we fish at. But used to, you wouldn't see anybody all winter long. Kevin says, wait, wait, wait. You guys have never heard of the elusive blue flathead? No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> never heard of right. The flat channel. <laughs> That'd be a blue channel head, wouldn't it? <laughs> and Steve Ransom's chiming in. He says the uh, Illinois record channel is 45.4 pounds in 1987. <laughs> Oh wow! Yeah, I wow. don't remember what the Missouri record is. I'm thinking it was what is it? Richard is like 34 or something. It's 34 not that pounds. Hard. I missed it by two yeah. pounds. Yeah, it's oh, 34. I'm gonna, beat, I'm gonna beat that this May. You watch me, Jerry. Mm. Yeah, Lyle actually brought that up earlier on Catfish Weekly. It used to be it was 58 pounds caught back in like the 60s, but yeah. it was actually they determined it was a misidentified blue cat. So they finally took it down, and now the, the record's like 3410, something like that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I see. Uh, hey, Steve. I, I know uh, hey, Steve. Keith Snagwister's Dustin was in here earlier, and uh, he's still here. And he, he was telling me, no pressure, no pressure. I was a little worried about him for next weekend until I watched him fish this past weekend. He caught a bunch of fish. Yeah. But flatheads don't count, son. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on, Steve Douglas? How you doing? Uh, there's Dustin right there. So what? I, I heard there was some more fish caught, Jerry, this weekend. You want to tell us a little bit about what happened there? Uh -oh. Well, me and Josh, we, originally we was going to fish in Mississippi down our neck of the woods, like actually up in my area, but there was not a single boat ramp we could get into because the river was too low. So, Josh, like I say, let's head to Ohio. We struck, which we ended up putting free boat, fishing the boat. But, well, one of the spots we tried was a hot water steam discharge coming off into the Ohio. Well, we pulled in there. Like, I think it was like the third spot we tried that morning. And, I mean, as soon as the bait hit the bottom, drum. And I'm not talking like little pound, pound, and a half. Drum. I'm talking like monster, monster were, drum. Yeah, they were We peeled out of there, and we got up, and we when we left that spot, we actually got us some fish. Me and Josh were talking, like, about, you know, fish recipes. Like, man, some black and fish would be great. So, well, drum is, like, some of the best fish in the world to make black and fish. Like, you know what? We're going to go up there, and we are going to do a drum clinic on the river rats. And we did. We went up there, and I mean, yep. it, it, oh, my God, it was absolutely Kill. crazy. We kept in the catch 27 we kept. And they were between probably five and ten pounds, and, and we lost count of how many we, we, we threw back after that. I mean, it was absolutely nuts. <laughs> yeah, because me and Richard were trying to run up and put it. Every time they go fish on, we'd run up and try to put them on a solo screen. After they did that about 20 times, I'm like, I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> I said, they're only going to do that. Just let them on solo I'm for a while. In front of the oh, boat every time they go fish on. Man, well, everybody... after a while, we stopped even saying it. We just turn around and show the fish and and chunk them, you know. After a while, okay? I mean, you guys are killing it. Hey, that tomorrow, yeah. you're on. You know, everybody from people I know here locally to people I've met online, it's a eating drum has become very polarized. 
thing. Either you love it or you hate it. It's good so, stuff. I'm telling you. Good stuff. Oh, right there. Right. Right. All right. Yeah. Jeremy obviously liked it. What about you, Richard? Oh, yeah. I like drum. I've, I've been drum for years, man. How, how about you, Danny? Uh, man, I love them, but I like them fresh. You can, drum is a fish you cannot freeze. Yeah. You yep. go yeah, you catch it, you it. clean yeah. it, and you cook it. If you put it in the freezer, you can boil it up, feed it to the dogs, because that's all it's worth. And Richard, you actually did a uh, on your channel. You did a cooking video of drum one time, didn't you? Uh, no, it was actually buffalo. I took cooked some buffalo. Buffalo. One time. Okay. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, drum. You absolutely. Uh, you, you got to cook it fresh if you want it. If yeah. you want it, to, you'll you try that. I promise you'll like it. Most people that don't like it probably got it from somebody. Oh, I've had this in the freezer. You want to try it? Yeah. Throw it away. It's junk. And it fresh, like blackened on the grill. Some. The, oh, it's good. It's great how firm the flesh is. Yeah. You know? mm. Yep. You freeze them, try to fry them, deep fry them or something. You might as well be eating deep fried paste like you did in school. Yeah. You know, I'm going to try one this year. And if I don't like it, I'll call every single one of you guys out. Well, don't get it, get it fresh. Get it fresh. Catch it, kill so what it. You need it, to do, it. What you need to do is call me before. Okay, you call me before you cook them, and I'll make sure it's good. Trust me. There you go. There you go. So how, how, how do you cook them, Jeremy? How do I want to cook them? Give me a a, a, a preview of what I'm going to need to do. The way, the way we always do it is right, right when you catch them, the first thing we do, Cut the gills, bleed them, throw them on ice. Bring yep. them home. We we basically fillet the whole thing. You know, scale it, just fillet the whole thing. And we actually cook the fillets in the oven for a while, and it melts that fat out of them. And in the meantime, on the stove, you're getting that red Creole gravy ready, and you finish cooking your your big fillet chunks in that red gravy. Oh, oh, I'm telling you, man, that's it right there. Mm. I heard that they have the consist. Well, they have the mouth feel of shrimp and the taste of walleye is what somebody described them to me. Never ate a walleye. I couldn't tell you there. It's very, it's very similar. Yeah. We'll have to try it. Steve Ransom is confirming that the uh, Illinois State Record Channel Cat was 45 pounds and it was caught Ooh. at Baldwin Lake. Ooh. Blue cat. Poor cat. That's crazy. I tried. I tried to tell uh, Chad Saturday that uh, that seventy that blue that uh, bobcat caught was actually a channel cat, but he wouldn't buy it. <laughs> I tried, you know, he wouldn't buy it. Nubby's catfish. It says, "Do y'all get the rocks out of them? I forget what that's called. It's that little bone in their head that rolls around and yeah. makes the noise." Yeah, the parrot, right, no, up there, in the <clears throat> room, right above their eyes, or the pair, like little disc. You know. What are they called? The uh, something or other. <laughs> I can't remember. We used to take them out, but uh, man, you kept so many of those caught picking drums. You just get sick of messing with them. Yeah, you know, no mess we with get that. them pretty. I've, I've cut a couple of big ones out this way fishing for catfish, mainly on cut shad for some reason. They seem to love those and worms. So they do pretty yeah. good, but I never considered keeping them. Maybe I'll I'll try it this year. I'll let you guys know. I'm gonna Keep need that. Keep give it a. Keep wanting to give it a try. Oh, yeah. I'll throw some chili oil on that. That'll make anything. That'll make a shoe paste good. Yeah, exactly, right? <laughs> uh, so this Saturday, it'll be Richard. Are, are you two, Richard and Danny, are you two the only two in the uh, Winter Blues, or are you in there too, guys? They fished this past Saturday. Yeah. Oh, you guys yeah, fished I'll already? Fish. Yeah, I'll, I'll fish Saturday, yeah. And look, there's Ryan from Sutton Hooks and Crossing Ice. He said he's had drum ceviche. Not bad. Hmm. I like ceviche. Huh. Yeah. Hmm. And Brian Shepard says he's caught a 14-pound drum on blue cheese. I don't know how <laughs> I feel about that. Yeah, see, it's, it's crawfish here. You go fishing for them things, yep. crawfish. Crawfish yeah. here, too. Oh, man. Yep. You want to you absolutely target drum? Throw crawfish yep. on it. But this time of year, like I said, that's my prime bait. I, I love crawfish for blue cats, but you are going to get, you're going to have to go through a lot of drum for every blue cat you catch. You know, early in my uh, flathead uh, days, uh, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this. I tried crawfish, right? 
figured I'd try them. Somebody gave me a whole bunch. I figured I'd try them. I couldn't keep those dink smallmouth bass off of them. Never got yeah. a drum on them either. So that's yeah, not a bad problem. Yeah. Down yeah. here, you you'll catch a lot of uh, yellow cat on on live crawfish on the really really mm -hmm. big. Ones. Big ones. Down here, you got to fish those monsters. That way, the drum don't don't mess with them. Don't mess with yep. them. But they, yeah, you'll you won't catch any real big ones. But like ten to fifteen pounders, you'll catch a lot of them down here on those big crawfish. That was like even before I had ever caught them. I was willing to try anything, yeah. Yeah. anything. Yeah, kind of glad I did. I learned the hard way that way. So, so what do you guys got planned for? Uh, Spring's coming. Spring, I think, is 65 days away. You guys going to keep doing the River Rat show every week, all well, through the summer? I, I'm Absolutely. planning on it. I, I, hope they, I hope the guys don't bail out on us. <laughs> Thank I'm hoping it's going to get a lot more interesting because, you know, as it warms up, uh, I'm hoping that we get uh, uh, real gals back on the boat with Richard. Of course, I'm going to be I'm going to be just all over the bank this year coming up. Uh, the other two guys, you know, they're going to be doing what they do when the spring comes. Uh, Creole and Parker are going to be throwing some magic on you. I promise. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'll come on one of those live streams one of these days if I'm out fishing tonight. I would shit. love that myself. Yeah, yeah. Love yeah. That. yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Awesome. I, I remember when I was on there the last time. That was that night I had a fly, five fly heads that night. I'm like, why couldn't I have done that on my own stream? It never <laughs> happens that way. There's people talking about, you know, something always happens when the cameras are on. When I turn my cameras on, nothing happens. That's my problem. Yeah, when I turn mine off, everything happens. <laughs> yeah. Every time I shut I'm trying to learn the rule. Reel the rods in before you turn the camera off. Because every time I turn the camera off and then go for the rods, they go down every time. Hey, Lyle. What's hey, going Lyle. on, Lyle? How you doing, bud? Lyle Stokes, everybody listening. My uh, uh, boss on Panfish Nation every Thursday night. Check us out there, too. I'm the co-host. I help Lyle out the best I can. Uh, he doesn't need my help, but I'm honored that he asked me to be on there. So, mm -hmm. And Brian Shepard says that bait shops back home stopped selling crawfish roughly eight years ago. Only mm -hmm. chubs and shiners and night crawlers. Because everybody's eating them. Yeah. It's such a, an invasive species in different states. <clears throat> the ecosystem. That's one of the big reasons they stopped selling crawfish in a lot of the uh, bait shops. Yeah. Our bait shop gets them once, maybe twice a year. They call them uh, pond crawfish. Yeah. I don't know how they're able to, to sell them to use on the river, but they're able to. And the, the owner's like, these are the only ones I can sell you. So these are the only ones I bother getting. So the price of baits out of control how about for you guys don't don't buy bait you never buy it you never have to buy skipjack yeah, or nothing nope mm. chicken i mean chicken's the only thing i buy but as far as like skipjack shad carp catch it i'll buy yeah. i'll buy suckers every now and then but that's about it and last time i oh. bought them was i don't know like two years ago, they were eight bucks for a large. I'm afraid to ask what they are now. I know the last couple of times I've bought minnows, like when I went perch fishing and stuff, they were almost five dollars a dozen. Well, they were getting now, pretty we high. were in Wisconsin last year. Me and Richard had to buy suckers, yeah. and we about had a freaking stroke whenever we paid. Yeah, no kidding. At that really? store, well, did you guys stop at that gas station that we stopped at on the way? No, it was somewhere. Uh, mm. What was that, Richard? I don't remember. It was up in town. It was wow. way out of the way. I don't remember exactly where it was, but it's just kind of an out, out of the way spot. And man, it was expensive. If you guys need to do that again this year, I'll get. I'll I'll send you a pin. They're the cheapest ones I've ever come across, and, and it's good bait. And it's on the way up there, so that's yeah. about there. The smart says Danny uses whatever he can find on the bank. That's true. And on the highway, I don't care. If, I, I'll pull over and pick up a dead duck, squirrel. I'll throw it all in there. You know, don't hit that. The neighbor's cat gets hit out in the front yard. These catfish bait. Oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to backpedal on that wall ago when I said I don't buy bait. There was a, there was a couple times that me and Richard didn't have time to go get bait. We had some stuff going on that I had to. 
Watch this, guys. Watch this. I had to go down and see my good friends down there at Grizzly Jig Company in Crothersville, and they always cut me a real sweet deal on skipjack. Uh, they normally sell them for like nine or ten dollars, and they sell them to me for five. I heard skipjack were up near twenty dollars a piece now. They're high. Oh, that's outrageous. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah. Lyle says, Jerry, you need a rooster. And, and the thing, <laughs> last time, last time I actually had to buy some slicker, I have a, I have a little, I don't know, probably like a 20, 22 quart bait ice chest just for that. I bought my little bait ice chest slap full with no ice in it for 10 bucks. Yep. Wow. Like I said, I, I get them for five right now, but we generally go catch our own. Yeah. We, oh, did yeah. you get them off the side of a boat somewhere, though, Creel? That that was from a commercial fisherman. From a commercial fisherman. Yeah, because what they do when they're when they're dipping the shad, they usually catch a lot of slicker too that are running with them. And they get they get sold in the boxes for crawfish bait here. They don't they don't keep that for catfish bait around here. It's just it's not a it's not a thing. So every now and then I'll buy a few, you know, if if the boats have some fresh ones, I'll slip them a couple of dollars and I'll get a few. Half the time they give them to me. There you go. Case of beer will probably get you even more than that. Yeah, I promise you. <laughs> you know, I brought a skip jack back up with me, a frozen one. I tried using it for channel cat bait. Not even a bite. Not even a bite. Really? Yeah. Damn. They don't, yeah, they don't know what that is. Yeah, they don't they, know what that is. <laughs> they got no clue. Now, Mark, if you're picky like that. And, and see, that's weird. Now, how it is in different that, areas. Uh, uh, you like the, the Potomac guys? They swear by eel. That's their favorite thing is eel. Now, last spring, uh, man, you couldn't throw a hook out there without catching an eel up here. And I kept three or four of them and tried them. I caught one channel cat. Nothing else would touch them. Nothing else, huh? What were you saying, Richard? I was just you talking about the, the skipjack, <clears throat> that, that magical place up north we went last year. I ended mm -hmm. up catching one on a piece of skipjack. Oh, you did? Yep. I just wanted to try it. I brought some up. And and don't tell Lyle, but I, I caught a couple on chicken, too. Oh. He can hear you. He can Ouch. hear you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. He's telling you to buy a rooster. He's going to – you know, you guys better be careful. He might inspect your coolers when you get up there. No. Yeah. Well, I'll <laughs> use chicken if it runs under my truck on the way to the river. There you go. Not explain. Exp <laughs> there he is. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> hey, that was him. That was him. I ain't got nothing to do with it. I, I'm. Mm -mm, I ain't got nothing to do with it. I got. I, I gotta be nice a lot. That's my story, and I'm sticking oh, yeah. to it. I haven't yeah. used. I haven't used chicken breast. No, I can't say I haven't used chicken because I would consider chicken livers chicken. Back in the day, I used to use a lot of chicken livers, but I've never used chicken breast. I'd have to lose a bet to to use chicken breast, Jerry. Chicken thighs, all I use. <laughs> thighs to either. No wow. way. I'm cooking thighs. Yeah. Cooking, cooking thighs. We've had this argument for how long now, guys? <laughs> long, time. long time. It never goes away. Never what? goes away. Look, if you've got confidence in it and if it catches you fish and you're happy with the fish it's catching you, Hey, use it. You know that that's that's all there is to it. Yep. Amen. It. Don't let nobody tell you no different. They're gonna tell you if you let them or not, Jeremy. Oh yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, yeah, everybody's got their opinion. <laughs> no, it is. Uh, maybe maybe I'll, I'll tell you what. I've always used them. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying I've always used a lot of shad. You know, and I knew shad was pretty good bait around here in the winter time, and I would always try to get them big old gizzard shad. Yeah. And we catch a lot of those little dinks, little tiny gizzard shad, little thread fins. I never had much faith in them. I thought, man, they're too little. They ain't going to put off enough smell. This last weekend changed my mind big time because every one of the fish we caught last weekend was on like two and three inch gizzard shad, little, little tiny shad. Every time I see, and I kept remembering. Every time I say elephants eat peanuts, people always give me a funny look, but they absolutely do. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Well, I said that a couple yeah. times this weekend because I remember you saying that elephants eat peanuts, and yeah, they sure was this weekend. You yeah, won't keep that. you won't keep the little ones off your line, but a big one ain't going to pass it up for the most part. Yeah. It all well, depends, and I'm not yeah. talking hundred pound class fish either. I'm yeah, talking the weekend. The weekend before that, uh, 
um, we went out and uh, I was throwing just a little three inch shad. Okay. And me and Richard were out on his boat. And I caught uh, what five fish that day a 37, a 31, uh, a 10, an eight, and a one pounder, or a five or one. Somebody. Anyway, I caught five fish. Richard fishing with chicken and a different baits and stuff. Never put on a shad and never caught a fish. The next weekend, I told him, I said, man, open up that cooler, grab them three-inch shad, and bait your hooks up. And he stomped my butt. I mean, he outfished me big time with my own bait. (laughs) (laughs) Same same show, Dane was catching on shad, fish from shad. I was way up river. I had shad and chicken. Never got a hit on uh, the shad. Was tearing them up on the chicken. Hmm. Yeah, yeah it, it's so hard to make that call. And, and Lyles, he says those uh, big fish eat whatever they can find easy. Yep. I'm a firm believer in the same yep. thing. And, yep. That's and Super Smurf Eric says, uh, uh, "Chicken works." Yeah, I know. Jello and chapter, Je- hold on real quick. Oh. Jello brings up an, uh, a valid point here. Don't get busted for yeah. illegal transportation of bait. You got to be careful what you're doing. Some places yeah. allows you to haul frozen bait from places to place. Live bait's real a no-no in almost every place where I fish. If you don't catch it on the waterway or using it, you're going to get in big trouble. Check your regulations out there, folks. I know the yeah, people they are personal. Right. I know that people in chat probably know this already, uh, but the people listening to this on podcast might not. So I need to make sure I put that in there. And that could very, very well be a good reason to use chicken. Not that I'm going to do it, but, you know, you can haul chicken thighs anywhere you fish. And Tom says his three yeah. flathead came off a three inch minnow. Yep. There you go. Well, my biggest my biggest flathead came off a little bitty uh, live green sunfish. It wasn't about three inches long, <clears throat> and it was like four feet off the bank and two foot of water. It was a forty two pound flathead, so it might be something to that. You know, small baits, and especially in the winter time, it gets cold like this. Um, I'm definitely not going to snub my nose at them little shad now for sure. That's mm. what we're using I mean, this got Saturday. Me. You better love them. <laughs> well, I mean, it got. It got me three new PBs in one day within like two hours, so I can't yep. can't grab yep. about that, you know. No, well, there there also comes a point, and I, I I I need to make sure that I say this. There, there's a lot of guys out there to catch a lot of fish, right? Whether they're catching it on, on 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 small bait, I don't think so. I think after they catch a bunch of fish, they're looking for a certain quality of fish. Yeah, they don't want to mess with the right. little fish. They're the guys that are de- definitely using big baits, and they definitely. But not all of us, and actually a majority of the people that listen to us, whether it's on YouTube or podcast form or lives or, or whatever it is, they're in that classification. So I pretty much stick with that as far as it goes. So I want to make sure that I don't give a, a um, wrong idea of what people need to do. When I first started fishing, I tried using a lot of stuff that I learned on YouTube and it didn't apply to my waterways. Absolutely didn't apply. Right. I had to learn the hard way regardless. So best advice is get out there and fish, downsize your baits, upsize it as it goes. And you, you, you can't go wrong with that. So. Yeah. Don't, don't get me wrong. We're going to definitely, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go out and catch some live fresh ad right before we head off the winter blues uh, next week. But I'm going to have a big 16-inch skipjack with me, too. So I will have – we're allowed three rods each, me and Richard, in the Winter Blues. Because – Oh, we're losing people here. They're dropping oh, like right. flies. I don't know. Dang. I don't know I don't what know happened there. It's odd mm-hmm. that they both fell off when Jerry's the one with the horrible connection. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, I was there we go. Got one Welcome back. back, Richard. And here comes Dan. Yeah, we got some. I lost signal again. We got a lot of high wind go. stuff right now. It's knocking the signal out. Yeah, I got both of us. We live, we live like three and a half minutes apart. <laughs> wow. But uh, that makes that makes a lot of sense. I don't know where I left off, but it was. Uh, I'm gonna get up early that morning. We will have the little live chat with us. I'm gonna throw them on ice. Then I'm gonna have a 16 inch skipjack. So one of my three rods will have a donkey bait on it. I guarantee you that. Because uh, you can't go wrong throwing a bigger bait in the middle of that. You never know what's going to happen. That's right. 
Yeah, yeah especially when it warms up, you know, in summer or stuff. I'll be throwing a lot of big, bigger baits, but. Yep. Love throwing those big old donkey baits, man. Oh, yeah. Damn, Damn Damn those five pound says, carp heads, man. <laughs> <laughs> the puppy heads, they, as they're called. Yeah. 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 There's a big bait user, Dan River Boy says I use big baits because I don't want to mess with channel cats. Channel cats will pack a big bait till it's gone. Yeah. Ask me how I know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, especially like a headpiece. You, you you see all that pecking, 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 and you reel it in and it's like they hollow it out, you know. Yeah. And there's nothing left there but a shell. Yeah, all that's left is the gill plate. Yeah. Yep. Here's something interesting from Timmy in chat over at Chesapeake Bay Catfish, and he says, the state record flathead here in Maryland was caught on a Zoom plastic swim bait. Hmm. That don't survive I can, I can see I that. Know. I can see that. I know a lot of people that talk about catching flatheads on crankbaits and stuff. Me, personally, I've never done it. I've caught some big flatheads on crankbaits and swim baits. I've never yeah, caught If you watch Josh or Pig Patrol, he catches a lot of them on on blade baits. Yeah, Josh yep. catches them on blade baits, and I had my first catfish on a blade bait actually this fall. I got like a twenty-one pound channel cat on a blade bait fish oh, wow. on a on a medium light rod. That was that was a lot of fun. I ain't oh, gonna lie. Yeah, oh, I bet. Yeah, the <laughs> only the only catfish I've ever caught on an artificial lure, and anybody can do it. It's easy. You go to a real foot lake down in Tiptonville, Tennessee. A crappie fish. Trust me, you get sick of the channel cats eating your crappie jig. You're gonna get sick of it. I I, I have that. I, I catch a lot of channel cats on on crappie baits. Problem is, if I'm using like two pound test, it'll wreck a it'll wreck your 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 line. Yep. Oh, yeah. If yeah. you ain't got another mm -hmm. spool, don't mess with that or a backup <laughs> rod. I wouldn't recommend it. So yep. Which is one of the reasons why I switched over to braid this year. But we won't talk about that today. Yeah, an, an, yeah, another great a debate. Argument. Yeah, that's a whole other argument right there. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of people out there that. Well, they can't mess with me because I use both at the same time. I use both here. I think I, I got both, both here. Not the same. <laughs> Wait, te technically, I use both. It's not at the same time. When I'm bumping, it's brave. Everything else yeah. is mono. And how do you, you're using that 832 braid, right, on your bumping yeah. rod? How yep. do you like uh, it as far as braid goes, Jeremy? Oh, it, it it's I will never use anything else. That's how much I like it. I've used a few other brands before. That that suffix, the, the sensitivity, I have not found any other brand of braid that's as sensitive as that suffix. I, I totally agree, and it's it, it's just tough as far as it braid is. goes. It is. It it doesn't. I mean, you feel it. It feels like a silk thread. You wouldn't think it would be as tough as it is, but it 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 is. It, it's I've. I mean, look, knock knocking on my wooden desk. I have never had a failure since I since I switched to suffix. Ned just never failed me. I'm gonna I'm gonna make a. <laughs> I'm gonna tell you guys something I usually don't tell everybody. I don't. Re I don't ever retie my my braid. That's one of my big problems. I need to start I, doing that. I don't. I don't either. I'll be honest. I don't. L l late night confessions here on the Catfish and Crappie podcast. <laughs> yeah. I need to get better at that. All my failures ever come up up, up on our on my leader material. Seldom yeah. do they happen to my braid, and that's just my personal experience. Yeah. Your mileage may vary. Hey, folks, I need to ask you guys if you could please hit that thumbs up if you're enjoying these fine gentlemen up here. I also want to make sure I give my uh, channel supporting companies a shout out. I need to give a big thanks to Fish Brain, um, also Amped Outdoors, Uncle Lou's Tackle, of course, Colton over at Multi Bars, and Port Barrington Marina. I got their links down in the description here on YouTube and on the podcast so you could check them out. I also want you guys to know that I got links to all four of these gentlemen Creole Catfishing, Parker Pursuits, Danny Stone Outdoors, and Fishing Freedom down in the, in the description. Go check their channels out. Watch some really good live content, some really good video content, and uh, uh, show them some love. Go check them out. You won't be disappointed. There's my braid right there on my bumping reel. That, uh, now, that what reel is that? Yep, that suffix 832. That's that coastal camo. I love it. Yeah, and what, what reel is that? That is that Akuma Convector. 
Nice. I need a yep. real. I need some line counters. Yeah, I, I look. This is a great little reel. Uh, Chris Chris Souders basically sold me on this reel. He rather use this than his Abu Revos for bumping, and it's a third of the price. That's the big thing. Some of this stuff, when you're having to buy, you know, I know I'm I'm having to buy three of anything if I'm using them. You know, yeah. usually I don't stop there, but I can imagine if you're using a bunch more poles and lines and stuff, it gets to be pretty darn expensive. Well, I ain't buying three more bumping rods. That that that, that last one I bought was pricey, so mm, that's my last one. You need a backup, Jeremy. Well, no, this this is my backup. Okay, that this is your one, backup. This okay. one is my backup. I'm talking about that one that I ain't that I ain't received yet. That one was pricey, mm -hmm. but it's gonna be worth it. Oh, I might know something about that. I, th I think you do. I think you know something about that one. I I haven't kept it much of a secret. I'm I'm so I I I can't sleep. I'm so excited to get that thing. <laughs> I might know a few people that might receive those out in the chat, but I'm not going to say their names. I don't want to ruin any surprises just in case they are. Man, it it cool. I I I can't wait. God, I can't wait. Mm. Sunfish for fish says. But you need a backup for a backup for a backup. Yeah, Ain't that true? <laughs> He's not wrong. <laughs> You're wrong. All right, gentlemen. Uh, start with, with we're gonna call it right here. Starting with Jeremy. Any last words, buddy? We'll go around everybody. <clears throat> Thank everybody so much for the support. We couldn't do this without y'all. Y'all are the reason we do this week in, week out. Thank y'all very much. Jerry, what you got for us? Same thing. I mean. Our show wouldn't be nothing about y'all watching every week. And we do it for the love of for what we love to do. You know, we love going out and fish river. It's just awesome getting to share that experience with you guys. I mean, you never know what you're going to get with us. You know, you might have Creole catching sharks. You might get Danny Warsh getting washed away in a tornado. You know, <laughs> he had to slide head first off in the river after a rod. Uh. You know, you just never know. You might have Steph catching a bunch of gar. <laughs> <laughs> he had to go there. <laughs> had, to, had to go there. Here we go. Appreciate the support. Much love to everybody. Danny Stone, you're next. Okay, absolutely. What the guy said. Uh, the, the biggest, the biggest thrill of all for me is, is a lot of times not catching a fish. We love catching fish, but seeing all the people that pop up in chat and uh, support us. As a group, it, it, it really, really blew up because I can go live just like uh, off a of Wyom or whatever and stuff, and I get you know pretty decent group of people that are watching. But anytime I throw that river rats up there in the title of the, when I'm going live, it's just like it blows up. People come running from everywhere because if, if they don't want to watch me, they want to watch one of these guys right here. You know, so it, it's a collective thing where we where we all support each other. Uh, good team effort and people. Uh, I mean, apparently they they love watching us uh, play off of each other and do what we do, and we appreciate them uh, supporting us on it because yeah. man, it just makes it so much fun. We look forward to the show every week. And it's something we're excited about, and we're gonna keep it going for you. Okay, Richard from Fish and Freedom. Yeah, just everything they said. So grateful for everyone that's uh, made this last year or our first year of the show a success. And but keep an eye out for this coming year. I think it's going to keep growing. We got a lot of exciting stuff coming up, a lot of different stuff. You know, we're all going to be trying some some new things, new techniques, and different places. And I think we got a lot of cool stuff coming up this year. So y'all definitely don't want to want to miss out. Keep an eye out for us. Cool. I want to thank you guys for coming on. I consider all four of you my friends. I know Absolutely. we've met online, and, and I've met a few of you uh, uh, in person, and the rest I hope to meet someday soon. But other than that, I do consider you guys friends, and, and having friends on this show makes my life a heck of a lot easier, and I yeah, love yeah. doing it. So I want to thank you guys again. I want to thank everybody in chat. Thank you, Stephanie, for the super chat. I appreciate you. Thank you to all the members, uh, the team members, and thank you to the companies. Everybody have a great night. Uh, keep the people that need it in your prayers. So uh, God bless you all. Bye-bye.